I'm Mason Taylor. And I'm Jordan Allen. And this is the NFL Recap Podcast. This will be part one of a four-part series in which we break down each division and their off-season outlook. Today we'll start with the NFC South. And first off, the worst team in the league, the Carolina Panthers. Now the Panthers, uh, they come in with a new coach, a new general manager, new coach Dave Canales and general manager Dan Morgan. They have no first round pick. And the big question for them is, Jordan, how do you help Bryce Young? Uh, Bryce Young, I think one of his uh, bigger, I guess the, the Panthers' bigger issue right now is just that offensive line. It seemed like Bryce Young going into the season basically really had no time to really throw the ball. Every time you see him, he was getting slung around, hit, uh, really had just no chance to actually do anything productive, especially with, I guess, like the receivers that he had with DJ Chark and Adam Thielen. So, uh, defense looked like they were doing pretty good, so I guess you just spend all your time going to focus on the offensive side of the ball. So. Yeah, they, they brought back defense corner Ejiro Ever. He did a great job the defense last year. I actually saw a stat that uh, the Panthers were the only team in the league to not allow 300 yards to a passing. No, no starting quarterback threw for over 300 yards against Carolina Panthers. Yeah, it's like if you can get, I mean, defense doing their job and. Also, they are in one of the weaker divisions, so I mean, if they're doing their job, then I mean, they might as well just yeah, with get no ready first, to start. With no first round pick, it will be tough to build a uh, to build an offense for Bryce Young. But I expect them to uh, go and get receivers with that because mm-hmm. I don't think the separation is there, and I believe that's the best thing you can do for Bryce Young is get him some weapons. Yeah, just Adam Thielen is just too old, and I mean, he can't. He's no he longer even a number yeah. two, or he, he can't be a number one at all. So I guess. Having him in the slot like he was in Minnesota would probably be the better thing to do. But luckily, this draft is deep with receivers, or if they feel like spending a little bit of money, then they can do that too. Yeah, some of the key free agents are uh, Brian Burns, uh, outside linebacker, Frankie Lugu, and safety Jeremy Chen. They currently have $28 million in cap space, and we'll have to uh, see what they do with that. Next up, we'll go to the Atlanta Falcons. They have a new head coach as well. Raheem Morris is in town, the Rams' defense coordinator. And another top 10 pick year for the Atlanta Falcons. And the big question on their mind once again is how to find a franchise quarterback. Jordan, do you think they should draft or they trade or they trade for one? Well, I think you, if you want to, I guess, like do the safe bet, it's probably uh, just going and you already know what Justin Fields looked like based off of his time in Chicago. Even though it wasn't great, also, I mean, Chicago's just a party franchise in general. So if you go in and just uh, trade for Justin Fields and have him around uh, B. John Robinson as well as Kyle Pitts and Drake London, I'm pretty sure they can do a lot of great things. Because obviously, doing stuff with Taylor Heineke um, and, Desmond Ritter, yeah. and Desmond Ritter obviously wasn't going to work. So. Um, looks like they just go go out and get Justin Fields and just see where we go from there. Yeah, I, I think that's the right choice too. I think Justin Fields would make the most sense. He's he's an Atlanta native. Uh, I think it would be really nice to see him back in Atlanta. And with the number eight pick, the Falcons are looking at best. They're the fourth best quarterback in the draft. And now, do, would you rather have Justin Fields, who was a top ten pick and has performed well at times? Or maybe settle for J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. Or you feel like you can trade up to number one. I'd probably take advantage of that. But Falcons don't have many free agents. Just Calais Campbell, Cordell Patterson, and Jeff Okuda are the most notable one. Roughly $26 million in cap space. We will have to see what they do with free agents. Yeah, yeah, I, think, anything? yeah I think um, those free agents luckily aren't any like big names I guess like Calais Campbell he did have a at least like a decent impact with the Falcons this year I, but uh Jeff Okuda um he was pro- productive enough to resign but nothing I guess like he won't hurt the cap space by any means um and then Cordell Patterson he's way out of his prime and no longer I guess that yeah. special Debo I agree. uh package that he used to have and also I mean Arthur Smith's gone too so yeah hopefully they can get something done Next up, we'll go to the Saints. The New Orleans Saints are in a bit of a tough situation with the worst cap space in the league, sitting at 83 under, 83 million under, with the Derek Carr contract and it not working out. Dennis Allen is quite literally on his last year and his last leg mm-hmm. with New Orleans, so there's gonna be a lot of pressure. So is it time to reset in, in, in New Orleans? Uh, looks like. That might be the case, because, uh, I mean, they kept going back and forth between Jameis Winston and Derek Carr, and obviously that's that just wasn't working out. But if 
they're ready to go all in and obviously defense was still doing their thing and actually like holding down the fort but that offensive side of the ball you have enough talent to actually do something there but Dennis Allen he has to he has to go and as well as get ready to get another quarterback because Derek Carr love him but time's up yep Saints uh, notable free agents are Jameis Winston Michael Thomas and Andres Pete with a with like I said the worst cap space in the league yeah it's a, it's a bit of a tough situation for the Saints. They hold the 14th pick, and uh, we'll see what they decide to do, but it's a rough outlook right now. Lastly, in the NFC South, we tackle the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is the division winners, and uh, they had a good playoff run. They lost Dave Canales, but uh, they got some key free agents coming up, and that includes Mike Evans, Baker Mayfield, Devin White, and Levante David. So... What do you think? Retool or rebuild, Jordan? Uh, seems like to retool, but like they are in a little bit of a pickle because of the fact I think uh, at least during the middle of the season they already said like Mike Evans, uh, he wasn't going to resign, so uh, he's out the door. But like I said, uh, the wide receiver draft is pretty deep this year, so they'll mm-hmm. be able to kind of like replace or if they want to go out and get a receiver in free agency, that will work too. But uh, I'm assuming Baker Mayfield is going to come back. But that Levante David, him being out, will be pretty interesting to see how they handle that just because of the fact of, I mean, he was one of the league leaders in tackles this year. So um, hopefully uh, they'll figure it out. But if they figure it out, I'm pretty sure they'll be back to winning the division um, with Baker Mayfield at the helm. Yeah, they definitely are a win now team. I expect Baker Mayfield to return with just because of how, how high of a level he played it last year. And just, be, I mean, with all the other quarterbacks searching around for the NFC South, I believe he is the only one solidified starter in this group. Mm-hmm. That's it for the NFC South. We're going to focus our attention to the AFC North. We'll start with Jordan, your Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, man. Now, the big question for the Pittsburgh Steelers, with new offensive coordinator Arthur Smith and constant – Doubts about other quarterbacks. Where where do we sit right now with Steelers and quarterbacks? We, is it time to move on? Can you pick it or is, is it? Is what's the deal? Uh, man, I can go hours and hours and they're just thinking about like the possibilities. But people have been throwing out speculation and stuff. Uh, like I said, the quarterback draft is pretty decent this year with JJ McCarthy, yeah. Michael Penix, Bo Nix. Obviously, Caleb Williams is gonna be off the table, and I don't expect Mike Tomlin um, or. Um, the con artist uh, to go up and grab the number one pick. So with that, um, I guess you just give, this is literally Kenny's last chance. He's had two opportunities and the problem really came into play is that Mason Rudolph looked way better than Kenny Pickett did within the last three years. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that Mason Rudolph is a starter. But um, if Kenny Pickett doesn't show up this season, uh, it looks like it's some time maybe up in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Mason Rudolph is also a free agent coming in this offseason, so we'll see where he lands. But um, the deal with the Steelers, I believe it's going to be a, what I call a war in their own house. Mm-hmm. It's going to be decided whether Mike Tomlin or Art Rooney, the owner, which way they're going to decide to go in quarterback. I believe Art Rooney wants a new quarterback can play, but I believe Mike Tomlin will stick with it. This is a championship caliber defense. I don't, I would be shocked if they don't go out and find a quarterback, whether that's Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, or drafting one. I, I would be shocked if they stuck if they stuck with Kenny Pickett. Yeah, Steelers got a very big problem with loyalty. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's why Matt Canada he was there for so long, and even though that he didn't produce for like three years, um, he stayed so long, which is for the fact that they're loyal to their players, and especially uh, Kenny Pickett going to the University of Pittsburgh and. Um, him playing for Pittsburgh is obviously he's a hometown favorite, big time favorite. So yeah. Well, we'll move on to the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, and they have a relatively you know kind of quiet offseason outlook. But the big question for them will be T. Higgins, the uh, out- impending free agency of T. Higgins. That is, the wide receiver is expected. Now they expect the value of him is is about twenty five million. But with such a deep receiver class. And they hold the 18th pick, which will be primed to get them a wide receiver four in there, which which in most drafts that'd be like a two or three. But do you think they focus on extending him or they shift their focus to the draft? Uh, it looks like they'll be focusing on, I think they'll be focusing on the draft just because of the fact that Jamar Chase is obviously like their number one guy. Mm-hmm. So um, with that, 
Um, I know big payday is coming up for him, but also for the fact that you have the most expensive quarterback in the league right now. So knowing that Jamar Chase is the number one priority, T. Higgins is still like he might not get a check. So you have to go out and get a younger receiver, a younger, cheaper receiver, and just kind of go from there. Yeah, they do have cap space. They, uh, the Bengals do, but I think it will depend on whether they want to put that cap space into better use into their secondary. Their secondary has struggled a little bit. They drafted young guys and they've been they've been playing fairly well, but the Bengals need to do something to close that championship window that Joe Burrow's in. You know, they got yeah. to they have to take advantage of that. And I don't think extending T. Higgins is going to elevate them too much. Yeah, I think that um Tyler Board was their number one their number three guy. And so I think he's a free agent too. He, he so, is a free agent. Yeah. Uh with that, uh obviously you know that I mean you have to resound at least one of them I'm assuming and T Higgins is not going to be that guy but um, I think on the defensive side a lot of teams now and I think you can kind of look at the Chiefs in a way they went younger on defense for the fact of younger and cheaper but put all your eggs into the basket on offense yeah. and so I think that's the route that the Bengals are going to end up taking. Zach Taylor is an offensive oriented coach the impending free agency the key targets for the Bengals are DJ Reader, defensive lineman, wide receiver T. Higgins, wide receiver Tyler Boyd, cornerback Chidobe Awuze, and offensive lineman Jonah Williams. With the fourth most, most cap space, they should be spending, but it depends on you know, where they want to focus that at. We'll move on to the uh, Cleveland Browns, and they, uh, they're in a bit of a pickle this offseason as well. <laughs> They spent a lot, a lot of money on Deshaun Watson. They don't have a first or a second round pick. Their closest pick in the draft is 74th, which is in the third round. And Nick Chubb is coming off an injury. Amari Cooper is is entering a $25 million contract deal. He's 30 years old. Elijah Moore hasn't worked out. You know, where do we go from here? How do you evolve this passing game that's been stalled for so long? You know, Nick Chubb can't handle this anymore. Yeah, it's uh I have fully have no idea. Yeah, and it's also for the fact that, I mean, it brings me joy to say that just because it's the Browns. <laughs> but uh, Deshaun Watson did struggle tremendously uh, mm-hmm. last year, even before the injury even happened. Mm-hmm. So uh, Nick Chubb, he's also getting older too, but significant injuries on him are starting to really play a factor. Mm-hmm. So uh, get ready to uh, figure out something because <laughs> they have no – Right side coming up, so we'll yeah. see. The passing game in, in Cleveland has been stalled for a long time. Kevin Stefanski has he's done a fantastic job with that defense, but the play calling needs to be a, needs to be worked out right there. They have some free agents that are worth noting. Zadarius Smith, they they uh, they was traded there last off season. He's been impactful, just not as impactful as they hope. Kareem Hunt, the backup tailback, Anthony Walker Jr., the linebacker. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting. They don't have much cap space because of the Deshaun Watson deal. Actually, they're $19 million under. So it's 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 going to be a general manager of Newsom Wharton there at Cleveland next year. For the last one, we'll do uh, the, the Baltimore, Ra- Baltimore Ravens. All right. They come in with a new defense coordinator, Zach Orr. They have a lot of key free agents. You know, A lot of that defense that needs to be assembled back, starting with Justin Madwike, who had a outstanding year at on the defensive front. And him and Patrick Queen are the two big free agents for them, as well as Kevin Zeitler, Odell Beckham. Uh, both their running backs, J.K. Dobb, J.K. Dobbins and, and Gus Edwards are both free agents. But, uh, you know, the big question for the Ravens is, you know, after losing Mike McDonald, which is a big, big loss, how do they get over the line? How, how, do, how do they solidify a championship window? It's, fun. it's funny, because it's the Ravens have literally uh... – they put everything into Lamar Jackson. I mean, they got him a great offensive line. Uh, Mark Andrews, uh, uh, I also have a, a great back backup tight end as well. Um, as well as they got him weapons with Odell Beckham, uh, Dave Flowers, Dave Flowers, Rashad great. Bateman. So they Mark gave him Andrews, yeah. everything that he needed. But and offensive line, yeah. And offensive line, and the defense was literally top tier as but, well as like beating up on the 49ers this season. So I don't really know where else to go from there. Yeah. I, I don't know whether to, we could start an argument about this, but whether it's Lamar Jackson, it's a Lamar Jackson problem yeah. or not. But you know, I I I think he's 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 going to win MVP probably, mm-hmm. and I there's some 
there's some real concerns over there, but he's already logged into a new deal. That's mm-hmm. not happening. So it's either, you know, add more or, or I, I don't know what else to say, but yeah. they've got all just about all they can do. But that's the, uh, that's the uh, wrap for this episode. Uh, the eight teams we dive in, and, and this is part one of the part four or of four part series. Like I said, um, uh, I'm Mason Taylor, and I'm Jordan Allen, and this is the NFL Recap Podcast. And we will, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah.